Hi everybody and welcome to this little video which is about organizing my retro crap. So I've got a few plans for doing this. Some of them involve doing things like recording all my stuff in some kind of inventory and using some kind of retro database software. But to begin with today we're going to do some benchmarking and I want to do this with all my graphics cards and record the details so I know which ones are good and which ones are bad and which ones work with what. So I've got my Mika collection of ISA cards here today and we're going to start with those and get some benchmarking done. First up is my ET3000 Sang Labs and unfortunately this card just won't play ball and doesn't work so at this point in time it's going to have to be excluded from the test. That leaves us with four cards and a couple of memory permutations so let's see what happens. So first up we've got an Oak OTI067. This is only a 256k card, so this is the most lowly of the bunch. Oak Technologies, a company founded in 1987, and probably more familiar to everybody for their CD-related stuff, which they were quite big in in the early 90s. And of course, the legacy of that is the Oak CD-ROM driver that we all use to load our optical drives in DOS. But they released graphics cards as well, the first being in 1988, which was the OTI-037, and then this OTI-067 in 1990, which was a considerable improvement over the first card from what I gather. Another interesting thing I found when I was looking into Oak Technologies was that they ran into some trouble with Sun Microsystems. When Sun created Java, the programming language, they originally wanted to call that language Oak and ran into some patenting issues with Oak Technologies. And so we almost ended up coding in Oak, but ended up coding in Java instead because they had to change the name. And Oak even by all accounts had a 3D card in the works, but they got caught up in the tech bubble in the nineties and when everybody was going bust and they ended up getting bought out in 2002. And that was the end of that and kind of the end of Oak. So next up we've got a card from Trident Microsystems and this is a TVGA 8900C. So this came from Trident Microsystems who are a similar age company to Oak in that they were both formed in 1987. And this card came out in 1991 so it's a bit younger than the Oak. But it's a bit more muscular because it's got 1 meg of RAM on board. It did come in a 512k version but we've got the full 1 meg here so that's pretty cool. And it also tells us the clock speed of the processor silk screened onto the board there it's 40 megahertz i did find out that this sold originally at 295 dollars as well on launch which was a fair chunk of money in 1991 so trident are quite an interesting company because they're around a lot longer than i thought they were they made graphics cards up until the sort of late 90s but then they diversified and ditched the PC graphics side of things and started making chips for television set-top boxes and I think they lasted until about 2012 or something like that and then they went bust but they were around longer than you'd expect but not making PC stuff and also in the late um, 1990s they actually had some competitive 3D cards which was something I didn't know until I started looking up stuff when I was doing this and there was a 3D image and another card called the Blade 3D and they were both you know okay well not so much the 3D image but the Blade 3D was a, a half decent 3D accelerator so I might be worth trying to seek some of those out at some point and have a look. So the next card up is a bit of an interesting one. This card is from a company called Advantech and they deal in kind of industrial computing so this I bought this as part of a collection of interesting stuff, which I'll cover in another video, but we're just going to test the card here to see if it's going to be any use in a good old DOS gaming rig. Advantech are quite an interesting company. They're still around and still going strong. So they went into industrial computing type stuff when this card came out. This card was out in 1994, but they're still going strong and doing things like Internet of Things and cloud and all that kind of stuff. So this is a processor from Chips and Technology, which is something that most of us are probably familiar with from motherboard chipsets. I think they've made some processors at some point, the 386 and such, and a, a bunch of graphics chips as well. So this thing is industrial. It's rigged to run one of the very early flat panel monitors. It's only got one meg of RAM, but there's a spare socket in there, which is for a frame buffer. So it has a dedicated bus for a frame, very high speed frame buffer. I don't know if that's going to make any difference to what I'm going to do with it, but just going to check it out in its basic configuration and see how it runs. I think chips and technology were quite interesting because I think they, they were bought up by Intel 1997. 
So last but no man's least, we've got another Seng card. Only this one works. Not unlike the 3000, this is uh, it's Seng Labs uh, ET4000 AX. So this is a one meg card and was one of the faster DOS cards from what I gather. Uh, I think the 6000, the next card after this, is kind of the gold standard for 2D DOS cards, ISO cards, but we've got a 4000 here, which is supposed to be okay, so we'll see how that goes. And as far as I know, Zeng Labs, they, they sort of came and they went. They were around right at the beginning of the sort of IBM PC days with some of the very first sort of graphics cards for that and came into their own in the 90s with the 3000, 4000, 6000. I remember seeing them in magazines at a point where graphics cards probably weren't very heavily marketed by name. You tended to get a lot of generic stuff and you rarely got a mention. I remember like Orchid Fahrenheit's and Celsius's and Seng cards being mentioned by name, but then you just get listings in magazines for generics apart from those kind of things. Yeah, Seng were another company who struggled. They had a 3D card on the way out, which is going to be the ET6300, but never appeared. They ran out of money. I think um, ATI bought up all of their expertise, and then the rest of the company was sold to some pharmaceutical company in 1998. So to do the testing, I'm going to use my test frame here. It's got a slot one motherboard on it at the minute. It's got an Intel... Celeron 333, it's got 128 megs of RAM, and it's got a compact flash card with DOS 6.22 on it. So I figure that this machine isn't going to bottleneck any of these cards in any way by any stretch of the imagination. So even if the, the benchmarks that we're running aren't specifically graphics-oriented ones, the differences that we see in the performance should just be down to the graphics cards. So hopefully we'll see some sort of sensible figures come out at the end. A benchmarking is predictably going to be using the DOS benchmarking pack from Phil's computer lab, but we're not going to run all of these. Um, we'll do everything in the top section, I think, and we'll do the Doom. We'll do the Quake, but probably not the 640 by 480 because I'm not sure if any of these cards are going to be, well, unless you want a slow and painful experience. You're probably going to get that in some of these anyway. Um, so yeah, the top two sections, apart from the high-res Quake, and then I think it'll just probably be maybe landmark and top bench. So first in is the baby of the bunch. That's the Oak OTI067 with 256k of RAM. Now I'm going to run the benches on this card twice because I'm going to steal some of the RAM from the Trident card and up it to 512k. And then if there's a significant enough boost I'll consider getting some RAM to upgrade that card and maybe using it in a 286 or something like that. We're off. The slow version of 3D Bench is up first and we're just going to replace the cards one at a time and build up a set of data and then we can see which one of these puppies runs the fastest. Mm, that wasn't what I was expecting to see exactly. So the Oak with 256k pulled in a respectable score of just over 30, 34 frames a second. 512k did the same, which is a bit weird. And the Trident, which has twice the memory, 1 meg, only did marginally better. The chips, 1 meg card was just flying. And the ET4000, that is just not right. I would have expected twice the frame rate out of that. At least it's the lowest when it should be maybe i don't know about the chips but on par with the chips if not better with the thoughts as i was sitting here editing this and looking at this graph i just trusted myself so much that i actually ran upstairs and did that bench again for all of the cards and all those permutations and got exactly the same set of results so maybe it's just something to do with this particular piece of software that it uh, maybe doesn't utilize as much memory as you think it would a bit of googling i found out that the faster version of 3D Bench isn't really worth running because all it does is it extends the frame rate cap and we're not going to get anything close to it, so I'm not going to bother running the faster version. Onwards, let's get Chris's 3D Bench going, and this is the lower res version, 320 by 200 so let's see how the cards do with this. Okay, so this looks a bit more sensible. Well, 
up to a point, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the oak is pulling, what, about 24 frames a second, but you can see a noticeable boost with the extra 256k. So the 512k card is pulling over 40 frames a second. So that's a definite worthwhile thing to do. So that's a fast card. You know, the Trident's were famous for being slow, but the Trident does have one megabyte on board and that Oak with 512k is pushing it in this benchmark. Chips is way ahead as it was in the other benchmark, up to 70 frames a second. And the ETX 4000, you know, this is supposed to be a decent graphics card, one of the best. What the hell's going on there? So that's kind of uh, what you'd expect from an ETX 3000. So that's just 25 and just beating the Oak on 256k. That's mad. Okay, so that was the low resolution version of Chris's 3D Bench, 320 by 200. And now we're going to run all of those things again with the more demanding version, which is 640 by 480. So the very first thing that happened with this was I ran into issues with the Oak at 256. It simply would not run this at all. So I thought it might be Vaser drivers, which indeed it turned out to be because... I think only one of these cards has a VESA compliant BIOS out of the box. That's the ET4000. I think actually you know, the Trident might have had as well, but the rest of them had to load the extensions manually. And even with the extensions loaded at 256k, this thing wouldn't entertain this benchmark at all. I suspect it's just because the VESA extensions kind of open up the hardware to allow software to probe it to see just how much you can get out of it for things like resolution and color depth but that 256k memory just probably wasn't enough to let it do anything so that's probably why that one flunked anyway let's run them through and see what happens so the pattern continues here so apart from the missing 256k oak things look pretty similar they just scaled down a little bit so everything's running much slower uh, but the, the relative frame rates to each other seem to be pretty the same. I have no idea what's going on with that ET4000. It's just beginning to annoy me. The trend continues. So PC player bench 320 by 200. And the pattern's very similar to what we were seeing in Chris's 3D bench. The gap between the 256K and the 512 and the Oaks a little bit reduced this time. But again, the, they're both like pushing the Trident in this benchmark, but chips is way ahead again as usual. And ridiculous the ET4000 AX is coming last so at this point I decided to look into that a little bit and I wondered if it was memory I stripped all the memory off it and replaced it with the memory of the Trident which I know works and made no difference whatsoever I went through the jumper configuration that only has two jumpers on it and I'm pretty sure that you know they're to do with IRQs and such and nothing to do with memory speed and um, I know that some versions of the ET4000 have jump uh, sorry dip switches on the front but those only have a, f a, f a 15 pin din connector for vga this one has a 9 pin and a 15 pin so i suspect that that set of dips on the front is for configuring video modes for the 9 pin adapter for, you know things like hercules and ega and what have you and um, i went through all of the permutations of the dip switches and that made no difference either but this thing runs like a uh, ET3000 and not only that it looks like an ET3000 it doesn't look like any other ET4000 I've ever found surely somebody couldn't have like faked this but whatever yeah, there's no way I could have sped it up so I'm just going to keep on benching it as it is so this is the 640x480 version of the PC player bench and it's pretty much the same again except you might notice two empty spaces at the beginning the this is another one that required the VESA driver and the Oak 256K wouldn't entertain running it, so that's understandable. But the ET4000 wouldn't either. Now, the ET4000 has a VESA compliant BIOS, to the best of my knowledge, and as far as I could find, there were no extensions, installable extensions that you could use to mess about with that. But this thing wouldn't run this benchmark whatsoever, so I don't know what's going on there. So we're going to look at the low-res version of Doom, and in this benchmark, that's just a heavily windowed and reduced detail version, because I don't think you can change the resolution of Doom. It's always 320 by 200, to the best of my knowledge. And the results here are kind of the same. Remember, uh, this is using real ticks, I'm afraid... I was too lazy to convert it to frames a second. So this is all in reverse. Lower is better here. So the chips wins again. And 
the Oak 512 is coming in second, but again, it's not that much better than the 256 version. The 256 version beats the one megabyte Trident and the ETX 4000, so that's just stupid, but there you go. And the pattern stays the same for the full fat version of Doom with all the things turned up. And yeah, so I don't know, it's weird. I guess it's just the way that the individual software uses memory or something. I'm not sure. So next up is the low res version of Quake, a game that's sure to kick these cards in the balls and bring them to the knees, even at this low resolution. So this is running at 320 by 200 and we can see that things are still kind of, well, it's, it's just a trend, isn't it? So the, the 256K Oak is only just behind the 512K. So in some of the benches, that extra 256 has made a big difference and some it's made a negligible difference and then up to the one meg on the trident and that just performs very poorly against the oak in both of its forms chips is way ahead as usual which is it's showing potential to be quite a good little dos gaming card i think and then the et4000 i don't know what's wrong with my et4000 i'm really quite upset about it but i think i should change that number four to a number three i decided to push it a little bit and run in this benchmark this is the middle version of quake the mid-resolution one at 360 by 480 but I knew that these cards were all going to die under the pressure and indeed that seems to be the case so it's interesting to see how the memory performs I look at the Trident with its one meg of RAM way behind the Oak in both of its forms chips still out ahead and the ETX 4000 I just I just don't even want to talk about it the last two benchmarks are kind of funny ones because they're not specific, well, they're not graphically intensive, so I don't really know how these kind of relate. I imagine I'm seeing differences between the graphics cards, so obviously there is a graphics element to them, but we'll just have a quick look at the results for those. So the first thing up is Landmark, and even here the pattern is the same, so you've got the two oaks are pretty much neck and neck with a slight advantage of the 512k the trident only just beats them both chips is way ahead as usual and the etx 4000 is just a worthless piece of crap and the top bench scores again very similar so the patterns are consistent across pretty much all of these benchmarks which i kind of guess is the good thing because it's not you're not comparing them against other cards you're only wanting to benchmark them for your own sort of point of reference within your own collection so i know i've got a problem with my et4000 out of this so i know i'm gonna to have to have a look into that and i've got some benchmarks that i can quickly run tests against these and see if i can improve anything by some of the tweaks that i do and yes i did notice on that graph for the speed test that i spelled it spreed test i can't type and i can't spell i hang my head in shame So I guess that pretty much wraps it up. Takeaways from this for me have been I need to try and figure out what's going wrong with my ET4000, which is a bummer. I need to also look into the ET3000 and see why it's not producing a picture. Hopefully I'll be able to salvage them in some ways. I could treat this ET4000 as an ET3000, I think, based on its frame rates. I think it's probably worth upgrading my Oak to have 512k. So I think the 512k Oak and the one megabyte Trident are probably good little cards for a 286 maybe. I'd probably put something faster in a 386, so it would have been an ET3000 if it worked. ET4000 would have been better, but uh, that Chips card performed remarkably well. So even though it's an industrial card, it did very well. And I have two machines that kind of need cards as permanent additions, a 286 and a 386, so it might well be the trident and the chips that go into those two machines but we'll probably be doing a little video on upgrading those machines at some point in the future in the meantime i hope you enjoyed this first foray into benchmarking i've recorded the results and will continue to add to them as i go through my collection but that's pretty much it for now so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did it'd be great if you consider giving me a thumbs up subscribing or leaving a comment below and i hope to see you on the next one thanks for watching